lecture 2 and if you uh, recollect in uh, module 7 lecture 1, we discussed about creep uh, of concrete and at the end we talked about uh, prediction of creep by ACI formula. Uh, we will just uh, quickly quickly uh, recap that, but today we will be looking into some issues related to creep and some related to shrinkage. So, we will look into creep prediction of creep what has been remaining. Also, we will look into uh, where creep is you know relevance of creep, creep in uh, civil engineering, structural engineering and then we will look into uh, measurement of creep and lastly some introduction to shrinkage. So, to start with we will look into the British method of predicting creep and if you remember uh, we talked about the ACI method, ACI method in the last lecture and where we said that uh, you know the uh, phi uh, ultimate ultimate uh, uh, you know ultimate uh, infinity can be related to uh, you know some factors 2.35, 2.2.35. 2.35 k 1, k 2, k 3 etcetera several factors. Today we will look into the other method, today we will look into another method. So, that is the British method and in this one what you do is first E is determined from equation and the ultimate creep from figure. So, E is given as E t 0 that is at any time modulus of elasticity is any time is important because you do not know at you know whatever time modulus of elasticity is not known. So, it is actually related to modulus of elasticity at 28 days and then this ratio of the cube strength of at that time to 28 days cube strength. So, this ratio is important. So, this is related to so 0 0.4 and plus 0 0.6 into this ratio. In other words, when this is high, this ratio is more than it will be more than 1. So, 60 percent weightage to this one multiplied by E 28 and uh, you know, it gets increased actually and 40 percent directly as this much. So, it is this relationship is of this form. Now, E 28 is found out from this relationship, E 28 is found out from this relationship 20 plus 0.2. So, it is assumed a linear relationship with respect to cube strength simply okay, uh, with the intercept being 20, it inter intercept being 20. So, it is put in as a linear relationship and this strength ratios depends upon age, it is 0.747 day, 1.17 for 90 days and 1.25 for 1 year. So, this from this first you find out the E corresponding to E at that time. Now, once you have done that, then you can use this diagram. Now, if you look at this diagram, in this diagram you have got relative humidity percentage here R h, R h percentage here. Then this is the ultimate creep coefficient, ultimate creep coefficient is given along this direction and this is for three conditions actually three conditions of volume to surface area ratio. So, these are 1, 2 and 3. So, three conditions of volume to surface area ratio in millimeter uh, on millimeter or in bracket it will be in inch. So, whatever it is the it is volume to surface area ratio is like this. So, up to certain value, up to certain value, up to certain value, up to certain value below 100 mm of uh, below 100 mm of volume to surface area ratio, this values, this values will be ultimate creep coefficient values can be obtained. So, below 100 mm values volume to surface area ratio below 100 mm values and this is the relative humidity. So, average relative humidity indoor, this is average relative humidity condition, this one is outdoor in United King Kingdom and this is 1, 3, 7, 28, 90, 365 age. So, these are the ages. 
So, if you have age say for example, this is a kind of nomogram let us say I have got 60 percent relative humidity 60 percent is the relative humidity and I am interested in the ultimate creep coefficient in 90 days then I come to this curve and then you know uh, my volume to surface area ratio is let us say uh, it is is between you know between uh, I mean below 200 above 100 but below 200 and this is more than 200 let us say 150 mm. So, my V by S is 150 just hypothetically R H is uh, 60 percent and I am interested in ultimate creep coefficient ultimate creep coefficient creep coefficient at 90 days. So, what will I do? 60 percent relative humidity go to 90 days go to 90 days go to 90 days come along this direction and it is 150. So, it is somewhere in between. So, it will be given as 1.6. So, it will be given in 1.6 ultimate creep coefficient will be given as 1.6. So, basically you can find out using this nomogram the values of ultimate creep coefficient values of ultimate creep coefficient all right so values of ultimate creep coefficient can be found out using this kind of a nomogram which is there depending upon the relative humidity age so the factor that has been considered here if you see it is the age volume to surface area ratio and relative humidity right relative humidity uh, of exposure so exposure condition volume to surface area ratio and age these are the three ma main factor uh, that was considered in this one to find out the ultimate creep coefficients. So, if you know ultimate creep coefficient then you can find out ultimate creep function which we have seen in the last lecture the formula is same it is the same because the definitions are same right definitions are same there is no variation in the definition to ACI method or other method. So, we find out creep function from creep coefficient we find out creep function from creep coefficient all right so ultimate creep coefficient can be related to creep coefficient at any age same similar kind of formula same basic uh, concept that was there and then it can be related to creep function as we have done in the last lecture so you can predict by using either of the method but obviously with modern uh, days with uh, excel sheets available and all that it is fairly easy to use the factors k 1, k 2, k 3 etcetera etcetera and uh, simply multiply them by 2.35 to find out uh, the ultimate creep coefficient which can be finally related to the uh, creep function in the similar manner as we have done in the last class. So, that is related to prediction of creep and now it is let us look into measurement of creep. Now, measurement of creep the standard that is mean the only standard perhaps is available is ASTM C 512 and what it suggests is that you stack cylinders 4 or 5 of them and they are subjected to sustained loading and strains are measured. Strains are measured I mean it will look something like this like you have a loading frame the loading frame is here. So, that will have some sort of a you know some sort of jack plates you know loading frame it will have some sort of jack plates uh, lower and the upper one and through which you apply actually load onto these are the concrete cylinders concrete cylinders and there is a plug in between gap right I mean but the main issue is this is almost schematic and there is a spring below there is a spring below. So, you know you apply actually load there is a spring below there is a load of series uh, load apply, uh, apply in series to set of cylinders and the concrete plug at the top and you know there is plug between the cylinder and the jack etcetera etcetera and also between the spring and uh, the concrete which I have not shown here and then you apply load like this and keep this load sustained. Now, the deformation that will occur will be absorbed by the spring will deform by this amount. So, there is no chance of load getting reduced because spring will provide the kind of uh, kind of uh, reaction that is required. Now, how what do you measure you put actually strain gauges 
you put strain gauge or any varieties of gauges actually has been suggested you know you can have varieties of gauges here in the you know gauges in the central portion I mean you can actually put in gauges strain gauges or you know where all, all kind of gauges are possible you can insert them put it into the surface or even embed them. So, all possibilities are given in the code and if you look at that that is all available and uh, that is how creep is measured that is how creep is measured all right. Now, this is costly it is large and expensive especially when you are trying to do a number of such cylinders because a loading frame. So, it is expensive expensive, but possibly uh, the you know the only standard method available for measurement of creep. Now, you have to also do one thing you see this there will be other factors which would be affecting the creep. So, therefore, you have to have concrete co controlled specimen which will be subjected to similar environmental and uh, such other condition and the strains there also change in strains there also will be measured. So, the comparison will eliminate out you know all the other other factors effect of other factors. So, difference between the strains will be attributed to creep actually under the sustained loading under the sustained loading. So, this is one of the setups that has been used for research chart they have tried to actually adopt somewhat simpler uh, way to subject you know that that would mean that you know if you look at this particular dimension of this one this will be very large you know at least uh, something like uh, 2 meters uh, 2 you know 1 1.5 2 meters the specimens etcetera etcetera plus a loading frame the loading frame through which you can con apply constant load. So, this is a large specimen and a, you know large setup and costly also. Simpler way is to subject two concentric cylinders right to a constant load applied manually through plates by tightening nuts just to you will see that. So, earlier one you have a jack through this actually you apply the load and maintain that load right and you can test a number of cylinders in one go you know. So, stack them and uh, put them together to study. Now, in this one when you have so number of samples becomes large in particular case uh, in fact, a minimum is suggested in the code again that you must cast at least 5, 6 of them one or two as control rest all for testing and so on and so forth. So, it is relatively large, but as I said earlier that this is mostly this is the only one uh, possibly the only type of uh, code that is available or guidelines available. So, the best the best way to do is to that only, but simpler way is to subject the concentric cylinder to a constant load applied manually through plates by tightening night nuts as we shall see. Then load is measured using calibrated steel tube dynamometer at 0 0.2 to 3 20 to 30 percent of the strength and then strain can be used measured using gauge like DMEC gauges you know DMEC gauges etcetera etcetera. But loss of load may take place because there is no spring support system like that is there earlier. For example, it look like these are the concrete concrete cylinders these two are the concrete cylinder this one and this one is the concrete cylinders. These are four rods there will be two of them are seeing other two will be somewhere there and there are other two will be somewhere there you know. So, four rods are there and there are plates here there are plates here and this can be there are nuts here which can be tightened. So, this is of course, the dynamometer and uh, this are the nuts these are the nuts actually which you can tighten to actually stress this this is fixed here. So, this is the dynamometer there is a ball joint point joint. So, as you stress this as you tighten up this. So, this will be stressed. So, it is stressed to around 0 0.2 to 3 percent of the you know 20 to 30 percent of the strength and uh, then um, then then allow the you know allow the deformation to occur and you can measure this deformation again by putting DMEC gauges here. The DMEC gauges here will also dynamometer is essentially for measuring the force the load or the stress you know finding out the stress that will come into. So, this is there are DMEC gauges you know is pre calibrated this is very much pre calibrated. So, it is deformation if you know from that you can find out what will be the stress. So, the stress level in this one can be found out stress level in this one can be found out. So, because deformation is known. So, strains in this one 
you can obtain. So, the stress level can be found out because same stress will be transferred through throughout. So, one can find out the stress level and the DMEC gauges or other kind of gauges you can actually apply in the concrete to find out the strain that would occur. At the same time, you must have controlled specimen in order to obtain the variation due to temperature and any other aspects that would be there. So, this will be have four such four such rods and through which there will be some nuts there also and that is how you do it. So, the it is manually tightened essentially to manually load is applied manually. So, it is actually a simpler setup, but the problem is see there is no spring here. So, therefore, the due to deformation because you do not have a way you know the, you do not have a way to unless there is a feedback system and you have a way to check that there is a uh, the load is same. Uh, this this will not tell you whether the load is remaining same or not because of some of the deformation reaction might get reduced and in the process you might end up getting somewhat load reduction may occur. So, loss of load may take place. So, these are basically uh, grip measurement not too many facilities are available in many places it is not a very common facility to have this, but those who are doing research may have to uh, you know set up this kind of facilities or wherever people do research crypt research on crypt this kind of facilities. The other one would be obviously better ASTM 512 type, but something simpler one can also devise. So, this is what is crypt measurement, this is what is crypt measurement. Now, let us see what is effect of crypt, effects of crypt are let us see what are the effects of crypt. First of all, it will you know increase the deflection in flexural members, you can imagine this this is my flexural member and uh, say simply supported system and I have applied load here. So, what will happen in the long run the deflection will increase. So, elastic def deflection and later on deflection may increase further. So, elastic deflection and later on deflection may increase. So, this could be creep this could be due to creep, this could be due to creep. So, this could be due to creep all right. So, increases deflection in flexural member that we have understood. So, while taking account of you know like uh, deflection control the modulus of elasticity value that you take must account for the creep as well because it is a long run behavior because what we have seen earlier was this, this, this is your epsilon, this is your sigma, this will be the elastic scenario elastic and uh, this is due to the creep at some 7 days or some you know like so the creep will act here and then 128 days and so on. So, finally, the modulus of elasticity is at this point. So, there is some effect of creep and it must take into account of you know it must take uh, this factor into account. So, therefore, deflection calculation must the modulus of elasticity used for deflection calculation and the code actually does that code takes those values into cost code takes those values into account. Now, you see the creep results in gradual transfer of load from concrete to river in columns. You know basically uh, if you have loaded a column loaded a column now, the load is coming onto the you know column, it is coming onto the column. Now, the bond exists all right, but you know more more this stress stress more you know through the uh, more the stress increases or this deforms more, this will have a tendency to transfer this because they are under same deformation you know this this materials are in parallel. So, this is your rebar let us say this is your this is your rebar, this is the rebar, this is the rebar, this is the rebar. So, they will have same deformation, they will have same deformation, they will have same deformation, this two will have same deformation rebar and this will have same this is your rebar, this is your rebar and uh, they will have same deformation because you know they are acting in parallel. So, if you have load like this they will have uh, same deformation you know same deformation. So, deformation will be similar. Now, when deformation is similar, the 
uh, you know, deform deform deformation is similar and deformation increases, overall deformation increases because concrete is creeping, concrete is creeping, under creep concrete is getting additional deformation, actually it would try to induce that deformation or you know the deformation to the uh, or the strain to the rebar as well, to the rebar as well. So, therefore, with time there is gradual load transfer takes place from concrete to the rebars. So, with time gradual deformation you know gradual uh, load transfer will take, will take. So, when steel yields further load is transferred to the concrete. So, only after steel yielding of the steel the further load will be transferred to the concrete. So, in eccentric column creep increases deflection and effect of buff buckling. So, now obviously, in eccentric column where there is a load is coming here, this is your column. So, actually this deflection would you know this deformation downward deformation would uh, actually increase the uh, effect of buckling, because this was bending this was bending under the moment you know eccentric column. So, there is a P E effect P E and this would P E would result in bending of this one. Now, creep would tend to increase this bending and therefore, buckling will be you know increasing. And again you take it in terms of the you know the E you take in calculations of all this modulus of elasticity must take account of all this factor into account. So, th this is done while doing in design. So, nothing to really specifically one got to look into, but the design E must take account of all these aspects in the long run uh, creep effect and so on and so forth. In statistically indeterminate structure creep relieves stress concentration by relaxation and reduces shrinkage stress. So, in statistically indeterminate structure now what is an indeterminate structure? So, you have actually restraints additional restraints. For example, a determinate structure you will have possibly roller and a hinge here. So, this can move but you make again another hinge. So, two hinge here it becomes indeterminate. So, therefore, it is actually restrained. So, statically indeterminate structures are restrained, they are restrained. Now, we have seen when you apply restraint, when you put in restraint, there is some amount of relaxation will occur, some amount of relaxation will occur. So, therefore, the stress in the concrete will actually reduce down, stress in the you know concrete will reduce down. So, it causes relieving, it causes some reliefs in the stress right. So, when there is a you know like basically creep would have caused some sort of deformation, but then this is restrained no movement can occur. So, therefore, this horizontal movement. So, additionally you will have additional force coming in. So, therefore, this will neutralize the effect of this will neutralize neutralize I mean this is just as an example this will neutralize the effect of applied stress and uh, relaxation will actually reduce and it will reduce stress concentration. Also shrinkage stresses get reduced you know shrinkage stress for example, if you have shrinkage stress in a restrained element shrinkage cracks would be tensile because this actually is natural position is here it you know after shrinkage it will shorten we will discuss about shrinkage later on, but shrinked position is somewhere there but it is restrained. So, there is a tension now this tension gets actually relieved because of you know tension gets relieved because of relaxation. So, this actually relaxation has actually tendency to reduce all kind of stresses including in, in you know in, in uh, restrained structures because relaxation occurs only in structures which are restrained which are restrained where you know they you are not allowing any deformation to occur. So, they actually reduce down the stresses of all kind whatever they are including shrinkage stresses etcetera etcetera. So, this is the first effect. Then in mass concrete of course, creep may enhance cracking possibly by causing more thermal deformation under temperature differential. Now, mass concrete the cracking comes because this is your top surface of the concrete and let us say this is your bottom concrete. Now, there would be a temperature differential if it is existing if there is a delta T, delta T exists between this one which can exist because if T could be higher, higher temperature, higher temperature in mass concrete temperature can be higher because heat may not dissipate from this portion, the heat may not dissipate from this portion, heat dissipation is difficult while heat will dissipate from this one, 
heat will dissipate. So, heat dissipation would occur here, heat dissipation would occur here, heat dissipation, heat. So, heat dissipation would occur. So, heat would dissipate from dissipate from this portion while this may remain still hot, this may remain still warmer, warmer if I may put it so, warmer. So, this may remain warmer. Result is what? This will try to shrink, this will try to shrink, this will try to shrink, you know this will try to shrink and if it tries to shrink, the bottom concrete will restrain it. So, bottom concrete provides a kind of restraint. So, restraint here there is a kind of restraint to that shortening. Now, if this is happening, net effect is a kind of tension, net is a tension. So, the cracks can come like this. So, net effect is a tension. Now, what can happen? There is a temperature differential, there is a tension and uh, the, the, there is no, you know, there is a tension actually occurring. So, uh, thermal deformation under the same tension, thermal deformation might try to increase thermal deformation might try to increase that means, you know and it is again restrained at the bottom. So, therefore, this might results in you know uh, causing more thermal deformation. So, it can cause more thermal deformation because this is a it is trying to expand under you know this or, or rather this is trying to contract and this might try to contract further, this might try to contract further over the time period time. So, there is a contracting there is a or, or if there is a tension it will try to tension is trying to you know like uh, cause deformation in a given direction. So, under same tension deformation will tend to increase, deformation will tend to increase. So, therefore, whatever the force is this is causing this tension, tension comes because it is restrained right. So, basically uh, this, this, this restraint still exists and because of the contracting forces this may further you know like uh, the, the enhance the deformation. So, essentially depending upon the situation deformation might uh, you know this thermal deformation in case of temperature differential it might cause it to increase because uh, cracking, cracking possibility might increase because of the thermal deformation. Now, it is actually trying to contract I am holding it in position. So, there is a kind of tensile force acting. Now, since there is a you know like tensile force acting uh, which has a tendency to cause a deformation in the uh, uh, which is which is actually restraining. Uh, the you know which is because of the restraint deform, restraint tensile force which there is a restraint. So, the tensile force ca comes and concrete can crack under those tensile loading. Now, when you have uh, uh, the uh, sustained this condition is sustained and no crack has occurred actually further contraction may occur because of the uh, tendency of the contraction may be there because of the you know because of the because of the creep itself the it, it may actually cause under more term to sustain temperature differential this effect may get enhanced and if it is not cracked earlier might crack later on. So, mass concrete this can actually tall building differential creep in inner and outer column may result in additional moments. Now, how does it do in very tall building this is your outer column and this is the inner column. So, outer column let us put it red outer column is here by red outer column here is red and this is inner column. So, this is this is inner column you know this is actually inner column. So, if I look at it my slab is something like this. Now, the load that would be shared by this column would be coming from this portion of the slab load will come from this portion of the slab while this column will share more load you know internal column actually shares more load. The contributory area catering to inner inside column should be more. So, it actually it has to share. So, this contributory area that from which the load comes into a inner column would be more you know it would have to support more whereas, outer column only half of it comes you know from one side. That means, this is loaded at a higher level. So, sigma 0 is high and we have seen all our definition was for unit stress. So, if the stress is more creep strain final creep strain will be more. So, because our definitions were specific creep etcetera etcetera all were for unit stress creep function they were all for unit stress. So, you want to find out the deformation in the long run more the initial stress level sigma 0 more will be the creep deformation. So, this will be deforming more. So, creep differential creep. So, this will have more creep than the peripheral column you know this will have more 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 load 
sharing therefore more creep than this one. Now what is this result? If it is a short structure not a very tall structure it, it may not have any effect. But if it is a very tall structure the column length is very very high. So this might result in overall shortening of the column you know which may be appreciable. This effect is not seen in relatively uh, shorter building only in tall building say 30, 30, 40 story building and so on and so forth. One if calculates out the difference in the creep deformation over the long run from internal column and external column there may be some differences. Now when you have settlement differential settlement between inner and outer column this settles more than this this will actually induce some kind of stresses you know um, 6 e i over l square or whatever it is because of the settlement. So delta 6 e i is uh, delta over l square you know so if the delta is appreciable it may induce additional stresses. So this is one effect in tall building this is taken into account 50, 60 story building or similar building 40 story building one would like to take effect of this one not 50, 60, 45, 50 buildings. So, RCC building where or similar kind of buildings this might effect might be there. Uh, this uh, shrinkage also does affect in the similar manner, but we can look at it look at it uh, in different manner. Loss of priestess is other effect. Priestess is lost in many ways actually. Priestess loss occurs in many ways. First of all, first during slippage can occur. You know, you are priestessing post tension, let us say the system where you have pulled the wire and anchored it. Now, there can be some losses right at the beginning. So, there can be loss of priestess because of slippage of the priestessing wire through the anchor and all that. But creep does cause loss of priestess due to relaxation that is what we have seen in the last lecture creep causes uh, you know loss of priestess due to relaxation effect. So, therefore, that is what we have seen even creep of steel is important here because creep is uh, uh, tensioned. So, but it is restrained its deformation you know its length is fixed. Now, due to relax you know creep the its natural length will actually tend to increase, but you have restrained it from expanding further therefore, uh, there will be some amount of relaxation. So, the creep of steel can result in loss of priestess, but we are talking of loss of priestess due to creep of concrete and that we have seen in the uh, other day that relaxation will cause loss of uh, priestess. Okay. So, these are the effects some of the effects and uh, some of the effect of some of the effect of creep on uh, structure. Now, creep is also related to fatigue uh, which uh, I just mentioned somewhere in the sixth module at the end of the line you know fourth fourth lecture, but uh, let us see how it is related. This is for almost all material many materials show this kind of behavior. What is said is uh, if you see this is time this is strain and uh, uh, after loading. So, you have loaded this is elastic strain this is elastic strain. So, this is your elastic strain remember then there is a creep, but beyond certain stress level this goes on increasing we have seen in case of concrete of course, in normal lower load level it actually tries to be asymptotic, but anyway the slope has in many materials slope will get reduced and it, it is like a linear constant rate increase and as you go further high at high strain at very high you know at long run at high strain it may actually result in it may actually result in failure because suddenly there may be lot of deformation. So, rate might increase again this is a high rate here which is tendency to reduce and here low rate tendency to increase and somewhere here failure may occur. So, failure can occur due to creep at higher level of load. Now, uh, this is called elastic strain this is called primary creep up to this before the linear range starts this is called secondary creep and tertiary creep again it increases non-linearly and the failure occurs. So, tertiary creep stage, secondary creep stage and primary creep stage right and concrete also shows this behavior about 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 or 60 to 70 percent of the strength. So, therefore, you know where to operate on that is one thing. So, therefore, uh, primaries and secondary creep etcetera and tertiary creep that is how we distinguish. So, concrete also exhibit this around 60 percent to 70 percent of the strength, but interestingly you see this as you go repetitive loading after each step of loading 
because it's sustained. It's you know time it is also sustained. I mean, you can assume, um, you can assume. Supposing my cycle time is very high, frequency is very low, right? Frequency is low. That means one case I apply, let us say, ten cycle per minute. Let's say for the just for the sake of understanding, or ten hertz, ten cycle per seconds. That kind of a uh, reversal of stresses, stress reversal. I, I have a cycle of stress and I just you know I have a cycle of stress and let us say one cycle of stress going to maximum compression to tension again and this let us say finishes in constant let us say or even sinusoidal or whatever it is rectangular I am showing, but it can be triangular, triangular or something of this kind some sort of cycle of stress I am applying. Now you see this let us say is 10 seconds then think of this being 10 hours or let us say 10 years. Now, one cycle in 10 years means there is a constant load is there, load is sustained, but the value is changing, so the value is changing. So, you know uh, fatigue is a case, reversal of stresses occurs at a very fast rate, cycle time is low, but if the cycle time is infinity, it is actually uh, sustained loading. If the cycle time is infinity, that is very long time to complete the cycle, practically my load is constant. So, therefore, that is actually a sustained loading. So, there is a relationship between sustained loading and fatigue. So, when I have reversal of stresses, so it goes to a you know it goes to minimum, but then the load is still sustained, it is not gone away. So, when I come back, I do not come back to I do not come back to again this point, but I come back somewhere above because load has been sustained for certain period of time. Second cycle. So, cycle time is less here, small, you know, it is a frequency is cycle time, time, time period is small. So, 1 over time period frequency is very high. So, very high low frequency, extremely low frequency, zero frequency is sustained loading, low frequency, zero frequency is sustained loading, high frequency is a kind of fatigue. So, repetitive reversal of stresses. So, now next time it comes here, then again I go back, come back, it comes here it does not come back to its original state of the strain actually you know it will not come back to your original state of the strain itself. So, uh, basically because it is under sustained loading. So, slope of this line is same as the secondary uh, you know is slope of this line you know it is uh, somewhat related the slope of this line is related to secondary creep strain. Therefore, one can relate the fatigue strength or number of cycle it can withstand number of cycle it can withstand number of cycle it can withstand you know to the secondary creep rate, secondary creep rate. So, this is the secondary creep rate strain per unit time. If you look at this strain per unit time, so one can relate this and this is what has been done uh, experimentally people have tried to find out for concrete as well tension or, uh, or, or tension and compression for various kind of materials one can think in terms of this. So, number of cycles to failure is in terms of log scale 10 to the power 7, 10 to the power 6 etcetera etcetera that is related to secondary creep rate in log scale in log scale again secondary creep rate. So, you know it is per unit time it is per unit time. So, if it is seen that when your secondary creep rate is high secondary creep rate is high the number of cycle uh, the failure to the cycle is low. So, it is related to linearly related to one can approximately linearly related to the number of cycles at failure number of cycles at failure. So, this is related to the secondary creep rate. So, creep and fatigue are somewhat related. Okay, we did not discuss this there is something called minors rule in fatigue although we are discussing creep, but I like to just come back uh, and discuss about this. Uh, this you know it is a kind of damage theory a cumulative damage theory. So, let us say n 1 is the you know number of cycles to failure number of cycles to failure number of cycles to failure at certain stress level at certain stress level you know or reversal of stress level certain stress level stress level plus reversal and n 2 is the number of cycles to failure in another stress regime if I may say so. In the first one I am going to some level of stress and coming back in the second one possibly I am going to compression and so on so forth. So, there is a regime could be different and it requires n 2 to failure n 3 is similarly another regime of another you know cycle of stress the, the amplitude of the stress could be different 
time period could be different and corresponding to failure is this. Now, I have subjected, so cumulative damage, supposing the structure or element of the structure is subjected to n 1 number of cycles in a particular regime of stress reversal, whose number of cycles of failure is capital N 1, then this is the damage. So, damage is N 1 divided by N 1, where this is the number of cycles still failure and this is the cycle actually I have applied. So, the fraction of damage is given by this. Now, the fraction of damage for another regime is this. So, when this sum total of k such regime is equals to 1, we say that failure has occurred. So, therefore, is you know mind this is minus rule. So, fraction we can accumulate the damages. This is the damage, this is another damage, and this is another damage in another stress, and this is another damage, and so on and so forth. So, when in sum total the all total of fraction of damage as, long, as soon as it becomes 1, if as long as it is less than 1, no failure. The moment it is 1, actually the failure will occur. So, fa you know this is my what is minus rule. So, when cumulative damage is equals to 1, you know the failure would occur. Now, what is relevance actually? What is relevance? How it is useful? Supposing I know I have subject, you know my, my let us say in a bridge, let us say in a bridge, you know uh, I know the vehicular load, uh, its pattern was available now till date and n 1 number of cycles have actually has occurred under that kind of load. Now, the suddenly the load has changed, the pattern has changed and we know corresponding to this failure number is n 2 and n 1 is the number of cycles for failure in the so far whatever has been happening. So, now I want to find out how many years or how many number of cycle it can extend. So, what I know is n 1 by n 1 is known to me and uh, plus n 2 which is my unknown n 2 divided by divided by n 2, this must be equals to 1 for failure. So, n 2 is unknown, n 2 is unknown and that I should find out. So, n 2 is actually unknown. So, I can find out the number of cycles that it can extend in future. So, residual number of cycle or residual life if I may say or residual damage that is possible you know or residual life that is possible under fatigue situation I can really find out from this. So, this is minus rule. Uh, which I thought should be important for us. So, this ones can be n, this n values can be found out from S n curves, from S n curves, from you know strength versus number of cycle curves which we have talked about. Alternative approach is to use secondary creep rate that is a measure of partial damage. So, secondary creep rate we have seen where secondary creep rate if it is known then number of cycle depending upon the creep rate the number of cycle it can actually extend that we can find out. So, under a given load what is the creep rate that if I know under a given static sigma 0 what is the creep rate for that material if I know secondary creep rate that can be related to n number of cycle n capital N that can be related to capital N and then one can find out. So, this is minus rule. So, this is related to you know uh, creep and uh, some related aspects we discussed. So, this is all about creep we can now just introduce the shrinkage for this class while uh, we will discuss it in details in the next lecture. We will discuss it in details in the next lecture. Now, why does shrinkage occurs in concrete? So, so far we have seen deformation is increasing. So, it is compression, it is compression the creep such under sustained loading it will further differ. Now, why creep and shrinkage is put together? You know both are related to gel pores and perhaps mechanism one can look into movement of water from the gel pores. We have looked into creep and we said that it is essentially movement of water uh, interlayer water and so on and so forth either within in inside relocating itself. So, therefore, the bond can get disturbed and the slippage of can occur and then it can re establish itself and so on and so forth that is what we have looked into right. Now, uh, of course, it is somewhat similar to you know long term consolidation in clay the creep because consolidation takes a very long time. So, you have the load immediately there will be some consolidation, but the water moves out and uh, further some analogy some analogy uh, right. Now, shrinkage is also movement of water related to movement of water from the gel system and that is why they are studied together they are put in the same module. So, when does why does shrinkage occur or when does shrinkage occur first of all in concrete shrinkage occurs 
in concrete shrinkage occurs due to hydration process loss of water due to and also due to loss of water due to evaporation. So, hydration process causes some amount of shrinkage which have we have seen it somewhat we will be re, you know looking at it again. And uh, evaporation loss of water would occur both in plastic state of stage of concrete and later on in the drying stage of the concrete as well. So, first is the plastic stage there could be some evaporation because the bleeding water bleed water might come at the top and subsidence may occur plastic settlement might occur and obviously, that is also a kind of volume change and then later on also evaporation can occur. But right in the beginning because of hydration process itself the volume of the hydration product is lower than the uh, original volume there is some shrinkage which occurs. So, that is what it is. So, volumes generally there is a volume strain it is not actually linear strain it is essentially volume strain volumetric changes are occurring. But we measure the linear strain and the you know, shrinkage when we talk of we talk in terms of linear strain that is in micro strain 10 to the power minus 6 order of 10 to the power minus 6. So, we measure it that way. So, that is what I said volume of hydration product is so very in the beginning in the beginning volume of the right in the beginning of the hydration process right in the beginning of the hydration process volume of the hydration product is smaller than the volume of the unhydrated cement. We have seen that while we looked into the cement hydration process and we actually calculated that as 0 0.059 CH or 0 0.06 CH if you remember and that is what is chemical shrinkage. So, what is it actually volume of the you know if you recollect if you recall, recall back this was your volume of unhydrated cement you know unhydrated cement basically uh, C plus W and finally, there is a reduction in the volume finally, there is a reduction in the volume there is uh, some unhydrated cement there is some hydrated cement and there are you know all those put together, but there can be some loss of some volume reduction was very much there even at you know what we have seen earlier there is some reduction in the vo volume and this volume reduction this reduction in the small volume that is actually chemical shrinkage that is chemical shrinkage. So, there are several components of shrinkage this is chemical shrinkage. So, chemical shrinkage actually one can estimate how stoichiometrically using the stoichiometry you can actually find out the product that would be formed from different compounds of cement C 3 A C 2 A C 3 S C 2 S all co major compounds of cement or even our other smaller attenuate formation and so on which actually causes a volume expansion right in the beginning uh, for you know within the structure. So, total volume change actually you can find out and uh, original volume of cement and water is known because specific gravity of cement is known water is known. So, therefore, what is the reduction in volume one can find out because of the chemical reaction itself and that is called chemical shrinkage. So, this can be estimated this can be estimated this can be estimated chemical shrinkage can be estimated. Then there is something called autogenous shrinkage. Now, it is actually some volume change occur to the uh, even even this is also relatively early stage uh, in a macroscopic is there a macroscopic reduction in length under constant temperature and without moisture migration to or from from the concrete. So, if you seal a specimen so that no water can go out of it no evaporation nothing is occurring and it is maintained at constant temperature also then there is some amount of um, you know volume change can occur volume change can occur and that is called auto autogenous shrinkage because a plastic material is now changing into a solid material. So, there is some volume change associated with this uh, and this is you know it is changing into a solid material one is a chemical reaction other is a plastic material changing into a solid state and therefore, there is some amount of volume change. So, if, if even if you seal it no do not allow water to go away no loss, but these are these are more of you know. So, this is still volume change in occur in paste and uh, they can result in some sort of cracking and all that as we shall see later on. So, this is autogenous shrinkage and chemical shrinkage and plastic shrinkage is also a terminology used quite often because for practical use practical point of view uh, understanding point of view chemical autogenous shrinkage they are very useful. But when it comes to a practical point of view you see the volume change that is occurring during the plastic stage is the plastic shrinkage. So, it is the volume change that concrete undergoes during the plastic stage 
and usually that could be due to loss of water, loss of water by evaporation. So, what you have, you will have something like this, this is your concrete and uh, you know uh, because specific gravity, specific gravity of cement is 3.15. So, it will have a tendency to come down and water has a tendency to come up. So, you will have water, water coming in, you know you will have water, water coming in here, water coming in here and accumulating bleed water and if it evaporates or even otherwise there is no bleed water, but to some water evaporates from here more water will tend to move upward and therefore, the solid will subside settlement to docker. So, therefore, this there is a volume change associated with this because of loss of water by evaporation and quite often this is actually referred to as plastic shrinkage, plastic shrinkage. Now, the settlement has got a role in fact, it can cause cracking, plastic settlement can cause some sort of cracking I think I mentioned some day earlier. I mentioned some day earlier. All right. Then drying shrinkage. Drying shrinkage occurs in hardened concrete. As it is drying, so once it is solidified and now it is hardening, at this stage, uh, if there is evaporation loss, the actually loss of water from the gel system can cause uh, shrinkage, and uh, this is called drying shrinkage. So later stages, drying shrinkage would occur drying shrinkages occur because of the evaporation loss, uh, you know loss of water due to evaporation and this can continue for months, one or two months in fact and within six months of course, by and large this will be complete and this is one of the reason, this is a reason for cracks in many thin sections, this is a reason for cracks in many thin section, right. So, let us see plastic shrinkage more, plastic shrinkage more, plastic shrinkage is due to loss of water at 20 degree centigrade and 50 percent RH, this diagram shows this this for cement paste and you can see in the x axis is time in hours. So, time along this axis, time along this axis, time along uh, this axis and time along this axis. Okay. So, time is along uh, time is along this axis all right, and uh, uh, time is along the x axis and uh, y axis I have shrinkage, this is for paste, this is for cement paste. So, cement paste shows lot more, you know it is about 3, 4 hours a lot of shrinkage it should, it should show. Initially it is not very much, in fact there can be small expansion also for a trangite and all that formation and this dotted line shows large quantity of cement in case of concrete. Now, concrete with 500 kg of cement is somewhere there. This is for 1 is to 3 mortar. So, that means you have a lot of cement here. So, cement paste, neat cement paste shows maximum. Cement mortar shows somewhat lower and this is with 360 kg meter cube of cement. So, higher the cement content more is this uh, you know shrinkage during the initial stage itself. So, this is plastic shrinkage test, test you know is shrinkage uh, as, as has been seen for paste, mortar. So, aggregate has a tendency to cut it down, aggregate has a tendency to cut it down. So, this is plastic shrinkage. Drying shrinkage, uh, there can be some irreversible component in this. Let us see what is drying shrinkage. See if this is the, this is again the edge, this is the edge, this is edge and this side is deformation, this side is deformation. So, you have you know like this is your T 0 and from this point you started drying. So, this is stored in air and you will find the strain deformation increases, you know deformation shrinks. So, deformation has increased when you know shrinking or reduction we are calling it as this side while swelling if you con con constantly keep under water this is it will swell, it will swell actually. So, swelling is occur you know swelling would occur under constant water condition, while if you are drying it will go somewhere there. So, this is the drying shrinkage, this is the drying shrinkage and then supposing you put it wet, wet again. So, therefore, then it will come back. So, this is reversible shrinkage you know. So, you have moisture coming in, but it does not come back. So, this is there some amount of irreversible shrinkage. So, this is reversible, this is reversible and this is irreversible shrinkage, irreversible shrinkage. So, with age 
this is elongation, this portion is elongation, this is contraction. So, if you are dry, if it is drying, then there will be so at T 0 drying has started, we find that it increases in this manner, but there is some amount of irreversible shrinkage, everything do not come up, because you know reversible shrinkage moisture comes in and then uh, re establishes some of this. So, irreversible component is due to formation of additional bond in the cement gel when adsorbed water has been removed. So, when you have removed the adsorbed water, new bonds have been formed, like we said even creep you know. So, new bonds would have formed, where water has gone, the bonds have gone, Van der Waals type of bonds have gone, but uh, some relocation would have occurred and new bond would have formed. When you add water, this is, this takes, wherever there was no bond, some bond might uh, form, but some cases where new bond is formed, that leads to irreversibility, this leads to irreversibility. Okay. Then we have uh, situations of reversible drying shrinkage reversible drying shrinkage. So, you can see that this is the drying that is occurring, this swelling wet saturated and then again I have actually wetted, dried, wetted, dry you know and so on so forth. So, this is drying, this is wetting. So, it will show a cyclic behavior, it will show a cyclic behavior, it will show a cyclic behavior. Right. So, this is what it is. Now, carbonation shrinkage, carbonation shrinkage occurs Carbonation is a phenomena where carbon dioxide from the atmosphere reacts with calcium hydroxide to form actually finally calcium carbonate plus H2. We'll discuss this a little bit later, more in the context of durability, and it this product occupies less volume than the original calcium hydroxide. Uh, in presence of water, all this happens. So there's a shrinkage associated with carbonation process. And uh, you know, if you have measured it, total shrinkage is this one. Total shrinkage is total drying, total drying plus carbonation. And drying alone, if one measures, will be something like this, right? Relative humidity percent is shown 20, 40, 50, 60. So as you increase, the volume change occurs like this. So this shrinkage. So net difference is a carbonation shrinkage. So, therefore, this is the difference, this difference is drawn here as carbonation shrinkage, carbonation shrinkage. So, carbonation shrinkage and you can see it is maximum around 55 percent relative humidity. So, carbonation occurs maximum at 55 percent relative humidity or 50 to 60, it is at very high level. Low humidity does not occur high humidity does not occur, because presence of moisture is essential and presence of air is also essential. So, at very high humidity presence of air is low, this reaction will not continue. In fact, I should write here H 2 O. So, in presence of H 2 O this will occur and this comes from air. So, therefore, if it is fully saturated, less of carbon dioxide will be available in the air and if it is fully dry, again relative humidity is low, less of carbon dioxide. So, this is called carbon dioxide. We will discuss about this later. This is of course, not very important, it is just important, while other two are very, very important and we we'll look into those and one has to estimate them, because shrinkage can cause cracking in certain type of structures. So, that is what it is. So, we have introduced the shrinkage that is, uh, we said uh, chemical shrinkage, autogenous shrinkage, plastic shrinkage and then we talked about uh, drying shrinkage, carbonation related shrinkage. right? So, next class we will look into factors which will affect the shrinkage, aggregate, water cement ratio, relative humidity, volume to surface area ratio, slum, fine aggregate, total aggregate, air content and cement content. The amount of shrinkage due to carbonation is relatively less, so we will not discuss much about it. I mean this is not, you know, it's not but the drying shrinkage really can ca cause problem. Carbonation shrinkage do not seriously cause problem, uh, not really cause serious problem the surface concrete might shrink, but depending upon the extent it is, it may cause cracking, but very rarely this is not usually seen. Carbonation has got other issues, so we will look into this, but drying shrinkage and it is how, what factors affect it, like this factors we will discuss in details in the next class. So, let us summarize this, uh, what, we have, what we have seen in this uh, class is actually, what we have seen in this one is summarized to summarize this actually, first of all we looked into prediction prediction of creep B s. Then we looked into measurement, 
then we looked into effect and in the process of course we also looked into relationship to fatigue minus rule etc etc and lastly introduction to shrinkage into to shrinkage so this is what was this class related to so with this of course we are discussion on creep finishes but we will continue to discuss shrinkage in the next class and uh, that's for the day that's for the you know this lecture thank you mm -hmm.